guys. Today I am talking about sneaking vegetables into your kids' foods. So this is a bit of a hot topic. I don't know. Do you guys think you should sneak vegetables into foods? Some people do and some people don't. Um, but if you have a picky eater, you might know how challenging it is to get your kid to eat vegetables. Personally, my take on it is that I try really hard to get my daughter to enjoy the taste of vegetables on their own, but I also see nothing wrong with sneaking vegetables into food. I actually sneak vegetables into my own food sometimes, even though I love the taste of vegetables, and that's because I try to eat very nutrient-dense food, and adding vegetables to something I'm already making um, is generally not any harder it might improve the taste. It'll definitely improve the amount of vitamins, and minerals, and fiber that you all be getting in, into food. So I am all for adding vegetables into food. So here are some ideas that I came up with for ways to sneak vegetables into food. Now, before I get into the actual food that I put the veggies in, I think some helpful tips are to Think about changing the shape, the texture, and the flavor of the vegetables. So using milder vegetables are going to be good when you want to disguise the flavor. And blending up vegetables or grating them or cutting them into shapes that mimic the size of whatever else you're serving with it are some really good tips to hiding those vegetables. That said, let me share with you a couple places where I sneak vegetables into food. The first place I sneak a lot of vegetables into food are um, in breakfast foods because I don't know why American culture doesn't include a lot of vegetables in their breakfast, but I think putting um, dark leafy greens into eggs, scrambled eggs, is a very easy place to get some great greens. Um, if your child or if you don't like the color of the green in your scrambled egg, there are omelets where you can fold an egg with some cheese over the veggies to kind of disguise them a little bit. Um, or you can blend up some greens and just add it straight into your pancake batter or French toast batter or something like that. It will change the color of what you're making, but it hardly changes the flavor, especially if you use spices like cinnamon or if you're um, topping it with maple syrup. Another great place to add greens are in sauces and smoothies. Now smoothies are a pretty obvious thing to add vegetables to because chances are you're not really going to taste it. It might change the color and um, there are a lot of cups where you can't even see the color of your smoothie so that's a great place for picky eaters to um, get some of their greens in. Um, I think the best vegetables for smoothies are dark leafy greens. I think they break down the easiest and I think also using a banana really helps to disguise the flavor. Soups and sauces are another great place to get your greens in because you can easily blend them up or cook them for a while in a soup and the texture completely changes on the vegetable. I think soups are fun for kids to eat too because they get to use a spoon and slurp and there's broth and the broth actually retains a lot of the nutrients that are sometimes lost in vegetables when you cook them for long periods of time. So I think that's a great place to get some good veggies and almost any vegetable can work in a soup whether you just chop them up or you blend it all up. Sauces are a great place for adding greens because many of the sauces that you're going to be making already include some sort of vegetable base or fruit base maybe, like a tomato. Um, in your marinara sauce, it's very easy to add a lot of vegetables. Making a pesto is, um, the main ingredient really is basil, which is a dark leafy green and, and a lot of kids will like pesto sauce. Blending up some greens and adding them to hummus or any other dip that you're making is great for kids because they seem to really like to dip things into hummus and you might even be able to get them to dip some raw vegetables into 
um, a vegetable containing dip. Using green vegetable juices is another great way to get kids to enjoy their vegetables. A lot of times the green juices are very mild and can be easily mixed in with another juice they're already drinking or um, made into frozen popsicles or you can mix it with some gelatin and make some healthy jello or gummies. Um, using a uh, fresh green juice is a great, great source of nutrients for your kid. I think veggies pair really well with pasta dishes and potato dishes. So in mashed potatoes, it's so easy to mash up some steamed cauliflower or broccoli in there. Or using a baked potato, you can add spinach and cheese. That's a really delicious way of getting some good greens in. With the pasta dishes, you can either cut your veggies into similar shapes as the pasta that you're using. They even make something that can change your zucchini into pasta noodles, which some kids might notice, but if you start um, with just making like 25% of the pasta noodles zucchini, they might be able to take that a little bit better and then you can just increase the amount of zucchini you add in it over time. Chopping up your um, cauliflower into macaroni and cheese is another great disguise for a vegetable. Meat dishes are a good place to hide vegetables also, and I don't think a lot of people think about this, um, but using a ground um, beef or turkey or chicken, you can make a meatloaf, um, adding lots of blended or grated vegetables, and um, meatballs are a great place to add some vegetables too. You just kind of, for younger kids, you just saute the vegetables down so they're nice and soft and they go really easily into that meatball. Baked goods are another great place to add vegetables um, because the sweetness and the egg and the starchiness really can kind of disguise and camouflage that vegetable taste. Um, grating them or blending them are probably going to be your best bets for baked goods, but I know a lot of people that put dark, dark greens into brownies because you cannot see the green color, and um, making a zucchini bread, um, carrot muffins, those are really great options. Some random things that I like to do with vegetables are making polenta cakes. I just follow the directions on the back of the polenta and add it into little mini muffin tins or into a loaf pan and saute some other veggies, throw them in there and stick it in the fridge to harden. Um, my daughter loves them just like that, but you can also pop it out and pan fry it for a little extra texture and it is delicious. I also make vegetable fritters. Now, I have made potato, zucchini, and carrot fritters, but you can take a lot of different kind of starchy root vegetables and grate them up to make a um, kind of fried pancake-like dish. Salsa is a great place to add vegetables. Chopping or blending some carrot, some cucumber, um, or any bell peppers is a great addition to a salsa. Here are some examples of where you can sneak vegetables into your kid's food. I whipped up a few recipes for you guys um, to show you just how easy it is to put veggies into your kid's food without them knowing. Here's an example of how I make my green pancakes. Here we have some baking soda, two eggs, vanilla extract, homemade almond milk, two bananas I took out of the freezer, coconut flour, and spinach. And I blended it all up and added the coconut flour in afterward to make little pancakes, which I fried in butter. And there's the finished product. Here's the green smoothie I make. Well, it's not even green. Here's the smoothie I make that has vegetables in it. For this smoothie, I'm using homemade almond milk, organic spinach and strawberries, and a frozen banana. And I just put all of those things into the blender and blended it on high until it was nice and smooth. And there's the final product with some chia seeds, hemp seeds, and coconut on top. Here is my potato, carrot, and zucchini fritter. This is a grated zucchini, a grated potato, and a few carrots, green onion, garlic, cumin, two eggs, 
some gluten-free flour and baking powder, all mixed together with salt and pepper. And I gave this a good fry in olive oil and coconut oil. And this is what it looks like. Here is an example of how I make my veggie packed pasta sauce that can double as a pizza sauce. For this recipe, I used a half a red pepper, three pieces of flat kale, a carrot, zucchini, a head of broccoli, and a fresh tomato, as well as one can of organic tomato sauce. And I just cut those vegetables down really small, added in some onion and garlic, and cooked them down until they were nice and soft with some salt and pepper. And when they were all cooked and soft, I added them with the tomato sauce into the blender and blended it up. And voila, there's the sauce. Not the most gorgeous color, but it did taste really good. And I made some pasta that was from chickpeas and um, served it for lunch for myself and my daughter. Here's an example of how I make my pizza crust using cauliflower. I just took a big head of cauliflower, blanched it, and processed it until it was really small. And then I put it in a dish towel and squeezed all of the water out till it formed a little dough ball. And I added an egg and some goat cheese to that, as well as some oregano, and mixed it all up together until it was a sticky little ball. Flattened it out to make a pizza dough crust shape and put it in the oven on tin foil for about a half an hour. And then I topped it with some sauce and toppings and put it back in the oven till it was bubbly. Here is an example of how I make my meatballs, adding kale and using leftover quinoa. For the meatballs, I'm using organic ground turkey, pecorino romano cheese, flat kale, a shallot, an egg, tomato paste, about a cup of leftover quinoa, and some dried oregano. And I'm putting all of that into a bowl. And I'm actually sauteing the kale and shallot first to soften them, and mixing it all together with my hands. And I put some quinoa flakes in there too because it started to get a little sticky. So there's all the balls rolled up waiting for the pan. And I just sauteed them in some olive oil and butter and turned them around on about three sides. And when they were done, I served it with some apple slices and there it is. Here is the chicken, lentil, and vegetable soup that I made. I just threw all the ingredients in the crock pot, but this is what it looked like. This has chicken, lentils, kale, carrots, parsnips, celery, and onion in it, and it was a huge hit. Here is my recipe for zucchini bread. All right, we have some ground cinnamon, some baking soda, coconut oil, sea salt, a ripe banana, three eggs, some organic coconut flour, and almond meal, and let's not forget about the star of the show, the zucchini, and some maple syrup for sweetness, and all of that goes in together. Oh, I squeezed the water out of the zucchini, that's right. Oh, and an egg rolled off the counter, so I had to make a flax meal egg, which is just flax and water as a replacement. So I actually used two eggs and one flax egg and mixed it all together. There's the dry and the wet ingredients. Incorporated them slowly and put it in a greased baking dish and there it is. I actually forgot about it. That's why it came out a little dark, but it was so good. Well, I hope this inspired somebody out there to add some more vegetables to their diet or to their kids' meals. If you guys like this video, um, don't forget to hit the like button and leave me a comment letting me know what kind of foods you guys um, include vegetables in or how you sneak vegetables into your kids' food. Thanks for watching.